Are you recording right now? I'm already recording. Oh my so god! Like <laughs> I'm just cutting that out. Oh no, no! You should totally leave this. In. Wait, we I, should he leave it in? We should ask. I don't know. Who could we ask? In the comments. In the comments. Should yeah. I have left this in or not? Yeah, because it, it's now. obviously we have to leave this in because it has to be yeah. in the comments. No, I can't edit it. Thank but you, Scott. Yeah, <laughs> but no, but you can't. You could leave the cut a bit before that. Right. But what are we here for? What are we here for? I think we're here for Kerbal Space Program too. Oh yeah. Oh, something, you something. got a, you got yeah, a badge or something. I got that. Shadows. Of, I think I left mine behind. Yeah, you got one as well. I right? did, but I left it somewhere. Yeah. So. Like, and people keep telling me who I am. So okay, I'm Scott Manley. <laughs> sure. I mean, you have repeated it so many times that at least oh, you know yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah. yeah. I also know how to fly safe, which is funny because of course the proper grammar would be fly safely, but you know. It, there's a long story behind that. Oh, right. But do you have a pilot's license? No, I don't actually. So how do you know how to fly safe? I, I, I don't actually. I just know how to tell people how to fly safe. Oh, right. All right. But okay. actually, I would tell people to fly safe in EVE Online, which is a very different kind of flying. Okay. But it's much harder to do that safely because everyone's out to kill you. Yeah, but isn't EVE Online like... Uh, it's a game. Look, looking at Excel sheets all the time and then there's just a tiny fraction yeah, but of... but there's a little bit of spaceship. Running. You can put the spaceship in the bottom corner. Oh, right. All yeah. right. Okay. And you can sneak through the jump gates. I tell you, I had some amazing experiences flying safe in that game. Okay, but how would you fly safe in Kerbal Space Program 2 after what you've seen? Uh, well, I would definitely avoid standing near the gigantic radiation-emitting uh, engines that they've introduced to the uh, sequel. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a lot of discussions about this, and I, I think it was... I'm not sure it's mentioned, but Nate mentions very specifically atomic rockets by yeah. Winchell Chung, so I'm like... Right thing to say. Okay. So yeah, we. Uh, I mean, Nate is a treasure. Yeah, yeah, he definitely seems to be uh, into it, and uh, I'm I'm glad that we are. <laughs> I'm glad to have someone like that on it. I, obviously, yeah. just being enthusiastic and loving the previous game doesn't mean you're going to solve all the technical issues you set out to solve. But uh, it's going to be an honest attempt. It's definitely not going to be a cash in. Yeah. Right? It's I mean, a team that actually believes in what they're doing. And, and actually, actually I, I do hope that they make a lot of cash with that because that increases the chances of the game being maintained. <laughs> uh, well, yes. Yeah, I, I think, you know, they, they, they have a fairly... Uh, a lot of high expectations to meet. Right. And yet, at the same time, there's lots of very very easy things they can do to do to make things better. Mm. The danger is that they end, you don't want it to be Kerbal Space Program with a lot of mods. Right. You want it to be completely re-architected from the ground up to you know, deal with the deficiencies and perhaps enhance the gameplay mechanics, you know, fix the physics system, fix the planetary terrain system, fix the scattering system. You know, like, you know, there's not a corner of Kerbal yeah. that couldn't do with a bit of freshening up. And, and, and it seems like they, they really are touching everything that Everything that I asked yeah. about, they had uh, something, a story about, yeah. yeah. I don't, sometimes they had a, I can't tell you about that story, but yeah, uh, I, as I said, but very... But those are very indicative that they're at least thinking about it. Yeah, definitely. For instance, there, there could be new classes of Kerbals. There could be. I, I asked about colonist. that, and they were not really uh, saying no, they were not really saying yes, so... Could See, if they said no, then there was no chance. Exactly. Right? So there and maybe then is. the rest of it is perhaps just subject to time, development time, release schedules, and you know, scope, because they have, they obviously have to release it. Sometime. Right, exactly. And I mean, they, they say they're in pre-alpha right now, but, but spring is... That could is, mean anything. Exactly. And spring is coming really fast. I'm, I'm not seeing that they... With a, a very thorough QA, <laughs> QA session, I'm not sure that they have actually the time to really change that much of the game until Well, we have only stuff we have seen is actually flying mechanics, we haven't seen, we've seen building mechanics, but we haven't right. seen any of the other systems, any of the project management, <coughs> let's say. We haven't mm. seen a map. Right. Right, we haven't actually right. seen the map right. and the maneuver plotting. So, yeah. No science so far? No science. And, and the thing is, like, all these things, these are all not really subject to the laws of physics. They can mm. reimagine the science system whatever way they like. Right. They might keep the old parts in for old time's sake, but they might do something completely different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, are you confident that they will crack it? That they will actually make a great game out of that? Uh, I, I, I'm. Uh, that's a really hard one because it's not a sure thing by any means. Mm. It's it's just it's hard. 
to solve a lot of these problems. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just something we have to re be, remain to be seen. They won't, as I said, it's clear they're not going for the simple quick cash in. Right. I mean, I talked to the, I happened to meet the CEO of uh, uh, Jeremy from mm -hmm. Star Theory. Yeah. And we talked about that the main resources that is constraining them is time. Yes. Yeah. As with all software projects. Right. I mean, they are, they are metaphorically in this spaceship that is on, uh, you know, a trajectory that is bringing it down inside the atmosphere and they're trying to get their game released so that they can yeah. fire the engines and escape. Right? I really hope they already have the heat shield installed. Yeah, uh, and the en they, they got to get some of the plumbing in place to make the engine fire or right. something, right? Right, exactly. I mean, Kerbal's flapping their rings and it's not going to cut it. Yeah. Their, stub their arms are too stubby anyway. And <laughs> I but, don't want to be landing on heads. Yeah, but you said they have fingers, right? I've noticed that in the, some of their graphics. I was like, that's odd. I mean, one of the jokes was, yes, they've had fingers. Yeah. But their suits have always had mitts. Yeah, yeah. Which is supposed to be sort of funny. Yeah. Like, they're astronauts that get these little mitts. Yeah. Because girls, they're not pressing buttons, they're mashing them, right? It's true. I, I think so. <laughs> Yeah. Now they're, now they're vomiting and stuff. So, so a lot of lot of stuff coming. But uh, let let's say okay, the game is already released. What would you look uh, forward to the most trying out KSP two for the first time? Oh, that's a very good. I mean, I would just look forward to building out some of the bigger ships and just seeing how that happens. I mean, I want to do a breakdown of the engines that they've had into the game mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of science to talk about it. The, right. The metallic hydrogen is a kind of a cool thing to start with. Yeah. Uh, how does hydrogen get metallic? It's very hard to squeeze it down a whole lot. And okay. Essentially, you squeeze it so hard, the atomic bonds, the pairs break and it yeah. forms this essentially a metallic plasma, right? Okay. It's a, where um, you know, metal is where you've got the, nu the atomic nuclei and the electrons are free to flow through this matrix. Right, so, so, so the protons are so meshed together that the electrons are now, are now in free mode. Yeah, the and, energy yeah. barrier for them to jump from one to the other. So, right. Yeah. So, so, they have so that's what a metal is. Right? Okay, yeah, true. Yeah, right. And once you, once, you super, once you have a superconductor, it's even better. Could you use a metallized hydrogen as a superconductor? No, right? Uh, possibly. Really? I mean, some versions predict it to be, but other versions don't. And some versions say that the stuff will just evaporate. Right. There's a, like a lot of different what yeah. ifs. The only, I mean, the la the only piece of liquid hydrogen, sorry, metallic hydrogen, mm. that I heard about being made was between the, in a diamond anvil. Okay. And they they said they finally cracked it. They made it, and then the diamonds exploded a few weeks later. Right, a few weeks later. Yeah, they had the sample and they'd been doing tests and they had okay. it and then they came into the you know, lab one morning and the diamonds were just like dust. <laughs> okay, so we're now completely away from KSP2, but hey, maybe that could be some of the causes of failures in the game. Because I asked them whether or not there could be like parts failing. I wanted to ask, what do they have? And spaceships like disintegrating because an engine failed or something like that, or that we have finally a reason to bring engineers on board, because mm -hmm. so far they... Okay, There's you can a few use them things. for mining and stuff and repairing rover wheels in case B1. Yeah. But if they, they include something like failing parts, then it would be awesome if like you had an engineer that could just fix it and yeah. The answer was vague. I would have to, to go back to the footage and, and look at it again because I can't really remember what it was, but it was not really a yes or no. So mm -hmm. yeah, could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've certainly, my favorite moments in Kerbal Space Program is when I've just built something and an unanticipated failure has occurred. And perhaps it should, the staging was a bit rougher than they expected yeah. and something exploded. And then you're that. left with a damaged spacecraft yeah. and you have to recover it. And that's the best part because you've got this plan and your plan is completely derailed. Mm. I One of my favorite early Kerbal videos I made was the Voyage to Eve. I wanted to do this big thing with a submarine and a plane and a balloon right. and a giant rover. And the launch vehicle, I don't know if you remember, everyone forgets this, but the launch vehicle went up and it had four boosters strapped around, by uh, held on by decouplers. And the decoupl one of the decouplers actually broke under pressure. And at that point, the engine is still firing. Mm -hmm. And so I basically flew the spacecraft with this thing wobbling around and I couldn't turn too much because, because otherwise it, was, it would fly away, right, right? It was balanced on top and I still got it to orbit. <laughs> 
but then, of course, my whole plan was that I, I needed to add a new set of engines to it, so I had to right. flow up, fly up a truss that would replace the broken dock. It was a docking okay. port, actually. Ah, the docking port, okay. Yeah, and so I had to fly up a new one with a new docking port, and I'd carefully lodge it in place. It was, uh, that was really cool, that flying. Yeah. I mean, I just totally didn't expect that. And, uh, and that, that's what you're looking forward to in KSP2, right? So things stuff breaking. that you don't know and Anything that surprises face. me and has makes me think on my feet. That's always the best part. So you must be a fan of Apollo 13. Not the movie, but the mission itself. Just in, yeah, in general. Apollo 12, Apollo 14, Apollo 11. They all have their own moments. Right, right. I like Apollo 14. Apollo the 14? first computer tele, you know, support ah, call, right? Okay. <laughs> I think I think you did a video about I that, I did. Right? Don right. Ailes. Uh, sitting in mission control, figuring out how to hack his own software, basically putting cheat codes into his own software because the software was like, no, you can't do this because you, it's abort type, let's fire the abort mode. It's like, ah, but I'm already in abort mode. What do you do now? Oh, just ignore it. Right, so maybe the first backdoor in history. Uh, it's more, it was really more like cheat modes. Really? Because okay. yeah. he was changing locations of state right. and memory. Right, it, right. It's a very, it's a cool story because the computers don't work quite the way we expect yeah. them to these days. What I'm trying to get my head around with KSP2 is what they said about interstellar travel, that it will have time warp, but differently than now, because the engines have to fire right. constantly. Right, so it, they're going to fly out in these Brachista Crohn trajectories, right? right? Constant acceleration, flip and burn, right? right as they like say in, in the, the Expanse, expanse. Right, yes. Yeah. So we're going to see something along those lines, uh, but I'm guessing you'll just be able to set up the time warp to say, I'm going to fire this, and I'm hoping there will be some sort of alarm that will say, time to flip and burn, dude. Yeah. Because, you know, once you're traveling at, you know, say, the speed of light, every second you miss that, that's 300,000 kilometers that you're missing your target point. It could point. be through a planet already. Right. Yeah. You, you, when you're traveling at the speed of light in past the planet, that way if you miss... Yeah. yeah. At least you don't die too much. Yeah. I, I once tried something like that in KSP when I, I had a failure. I forgot to bring, I don't know, some, some kind of energy generating device mm -hmm. or whatever. And I sent a vehicle from Kerbal from Kerbin to Jew mm -hmm. with an ion rocket. It was full of ion propulsion and I burned for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. in-game <laughs> yeah. and then flipped it around and burned for at the same time uh, when it jeweled. But I did some time warping in between, otherwise it, we would probably still doing it. Yeah. But yeah, the interesting thing is, was that the projected orbit was like moving uh, completely away from where I initially wanted it to end up once I started firing, firing the retrograde burn. But it's probably to be expected because once I fire so far away from the actual maneuver node, yeah. I change the trajectory. So right. yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard, to to, hard to target that thing. Right. Currently, Kerbal doesn't really let you do Brachista Crohn trajectories because no. it doesn't have the mechanism for calculating. But we can calcul calculate them, sure. Maybe we could mod something like that. And there's plenty of mods that do all sorts of things. Yeah. I, I just tend to eyeball it. That's when, when you could be hard with Interstellar. You know, like the stars there, it's kind of bright, it's pretty right. easy to see it. Right, true. The problem is you get close enough and it just burns your eyeball. Yeah, not the good Kerbals idea. have big eyeballs, I don't know if you've true. noticed that. Maybe they have also big sunshades? I would have, that's a good point, I'd like to see that in some of the characters. Also what we don't know is maybe Kerbals are immune to radiation. So you they don't have such a problem with the... That would certainly engines. solve a lot of their problems. <laughs> But it could it's also remove right? interesting gameplay mechanics. Yeah, I would see it as a cop out. I, I really would like to see some something that you have to protect your kerbals from aside falling down or burning up in the atmosphere, like like life support system light, not like tech life support or the other mods mm -hmm. that are out there, which are really involved, but like like some light version of a life support thing or so just protecting them from radiation from right. the nuke engines. Right. Well, you know. That's something I've always wanted to do is have the, you know, Nerva engines. When those stop firing, they're still emitting a huge amount of radiation. So if you are, say, docking that onto a crewed vehicle, you have to make sure you're always pointing at it so the shadow shield protects mm. the... And that actually changes your entire docking behavior. Right. Because right. you, you can't change, you know... You didn't, can't. didn't you try to emulate this in, when you did your interstellar I, I series? Sort of you sort of made some comments. Some sort of yeah, shield yeah, out of structural I, panels. Yeah, <laughs> it didn't actually make any difference, but I put it in there just for giggles. Yeah, 
but I think I've seen shields like that in the footage they've shown us with the Orion Drive. There was like a huge metal. That's disc. the plate. Yeah, that's the pusher plate. No, no, no. There, and there was the, another. There was the push, There was the pusher plate. There were the pistons. Then there was like the magazine for the for the for the bombs. And then there was like this huge disc mm -hmm. just between that and the rest of the spaceship. Yeah. It could be a radiation shield. Could be something completely different. Maybe. Okay. So yeah, Scott. Thanks a lot for your time. Hey, thank you. It was a you. pleasure. We're yes. shaking hands. The universe See, is not exploding. We've not exploded, so therefore we aren't from different time periods. Right. Thanks, Excel. Fly safe. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.